John D. Bunting, profesor del Departamento de Lingüística Aplicada e Inglés como Segunda Lengua de la Universidad Estatal de Georgia en los Estados Unidos de Norteamérica. Ha publicado obras como Vocabulary in News, Uso del Vocabulario, del 2010, y Grammar and Beyond 4, Gramática y Más Allá 4, del 2012. Hi, this is John Bunting, and I'd like to talk with you for a few minutes about a topic that I think is both interesting and important, observation in our classrooms. Now, for many of us, observations are a pretty stressful event because it often means someone, maybe your supervisor, coming into your classroom to evaluate you. Are you following the curriculum? Are you using time well? Do you engage your students? This kind of observation can be very stressful, and that's not really surprising. Today, I want to talk about a different kind of observation with a different goal. Formative observation done among colleagues. Now here's a question for you. What are some reasons for peer observation by language teachers? You can pause for a moment and think of answers to this question. Now here are some ideas from a wonderful article by John Murphy back in 1992. Some reasons for observing that he identified are, one, observing to help the classroom teacher. And in this kind of observation, you give the teacher informal suggestions based on what you saw in the classroom. Another is observing as part of learning to teach. This can be done by students who want to be t become teachers or by experienced teachers who are facing a new challenge and want to observe how others are handling it. Three, observing in order to know how to observe. And this one means using the observation process as a way to become an, a better observer. And it's often done by administrators in training or teachers who want to be able to observe others effectively. Another is teachers to each other. And this works best when it's collaborative and both teachers observe each other and talk casually about what's going on in the classroom. A fifth reason is a mentoring process. Uh, maybe an experienced teacher is working with a new teacher, and both the mentor and the mentee can be observers. Another is observing to help build your own awareness. This process is used by teachers who want to better understand their own teaching by using others' teaching as a mirror of sorts to examine their own teaching. Finally, you can use observing as a way to collect research data, either on teaching or learning. But now, let's consider how we observe. First, there should be a clear set of rules. Murphy calls this observation etiquette. And that's about how you act in the classroom. Determine together what's appropriate. For example, should an observer leave the class early? Should an observer interact with students or make comments? Where should the observer sit? All these issues are important. And you can pause now if you want and think of any other issue that you think would be important in creating observation etiquette. And finally, I want to propose some ideas that were first mentioned by a grad student at Georgia State, Sarah Upshaw, when she took Dr. Murphy's class a while ago. I think that they're a great starting place for your own conversations about peer observation. Sarah suggested that the observer and the teacher should meet beforehand and clarify the observer's role during the class. She also thought that observing multiple times would help get a better sense of the classroom dynamic. Try to be specific in your observing, recording the actions of teachers and students. Include different observation techniques and areas of focus. Also, be ready for unexpected encounters with students and know how to respond appropriately. Check out the group dynamics, not just during, but also before and after class. And finally, if you're planning to transcribe interaction or formalize your notes, try to do it right away when the class experience is still fresh in your mind. 
You can also share results and get feedback from the teacher after the observation. And it's better to do that earlier rather than later. Well, these are just a few ideas about observation. Maybe you can discuss these ones and come up with some others of your own in your discussion with your fellow teachers. It's been nice talking to you.